Quaternion class. I am teacher Nancy and I will be your teacher in English for today. So before we start, uh, everybody stand and let us pray. We will be Father and Son and Holy Spirit. So how are you today? Oh, it's good that you are all fine. So are you excited for our lesson for today? Okay, so to begin with, let us have an activity. So I will group you to five. Uh, this group will group one, group two, group three, group four, and group five. I will give you some papers and then you will identify if, uh, what is the meaning of this. And our group is called put it into groups. Okay, so let's start now. This one is for group one. This is for group two, group three, group four, and group five. Okay, I will give you five minutes to do it. You may start now. Okay, so time's up. Let's start. Okay, let's see the activity of group one. Okay. So for group one, it is raining cats and dogs. Do you think it is correct, class? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let's give uh, group one a clap. How about group two? Let me see your work. For group two, they come out with butterflies in my stomach. Is it correct? Okay, so let's give them also a round of applause. How about group three? For group three, they come up with a piece of cake. Okay, is it correct? Yes. Okay, so a piece of cake is also correct. Let us give them a round of applause also. How about group four? For group four, they come out with break a leg. Is it correct, class? Yes. Okay, so let us also give them a round of applause. And finally, group 5. For group 5, it is about cloud 9. Okay, so is it correct? Yes. Okay, so let's give also a round of applause for group 5. Okay, so what do you think is uh, our lesson for today? Yes, my card. Okay, so it has something to do with languages okay we have literal and figurative language so those are uh, just uh, some figurative languages so today we will be uh, talking about figurative and literal languages so before we formally start let us have first the lesson objectives for today we have number one, please read. Identify the figures of the speech along with their definition and examples. So you're going to identify the figures of the speech. Second one, provide sentences with different figures of the speech. And lastly, value cooperation by unraveling the essence of figures of the speech in our daily lives through group activities. Okay, so you may now take your seat, go back to your proper seat, and we will start. Let me just take this off. Okay, so just, just like what I have said a while, our last one is about literal and figurative language. So, anyone among you who have an idea about the literal and figurative language. Yes, Yuna. Okay, literal. Good, Yuna, you got it right. When you say literal language, it means that the message conveys is exact and straight to the point. Meaning, you will take it literally. How about figurative language? Yes. Yogi. Okay. Figurative languages uses figurative devices 
can the reader or audience extract the meaning? So meaning, it is not same as literal language wherein we convey the exact meaning. Instead, uh, we need to extract the meaning from the words or sentences. The second example, uh, four figurative languages or the figures of speech. Anyone among you who knows some figures of speech? Do you know some figures of speech? Yes? Okay, so I think you know some. So let's start with the first one. I have here some jumbo letters and we're going to uh, jumble it to form a word. Okay, for number one, what the name is that figures of speech? Yes, Cindy. Very good. You got it right. It is simile. So what do we mean by simile? Do you have any idea? Yes? Okay. Exactly. Very good, Yuna. Simile is a comparison between uh, two unlike things by using as or like. Because you can see, when we use simile, we have to use the words as or like. Okay, who can give an example? You may write it on the board. Okay. So let's take a look on the example of uh, an example of Yodin. Okay. So for Yodin, she said that my sister is as noisy as a bee. Do you think it is correct, class? Yes. Why do you say so? Exactly because of the usage, usage of the word as in the sentence. How about sentence number two of Yudhi? His blue eyes are like the ocean deep. Is it also correct? Yes, because of the usage of the word like. Okay, so do you know now what is simile? Okay, so let's proceed with the second one. Later, I will ask you again if you still uh, know what is simile, okay? Next, how about second one? What do you think is that? That one is metaphor. You got it right. How about metaphor? What do we mean by metaphor? Class, do you have any ideas? Okay, it is direct comparison of two unlike things. Okay? A while, we have said that a simile compares two unlike things by using as or like. But in metaphor class, we are not using as or like. Instead, we are comparing two dissimilar things directly. Meaning, you will just compare them let be, you do not use us or like. For example, um, who can give an example? Yes, Sophie. Okay, Sophie. Okay, let's uh, read the example of Sophie. Her voice is music to my ear. Do you think that example is correct? Is it a metaphor? Yes, very good. Why? Because of uh, she is comparing what? Voice and music. Okay. How about the second sentence? Your mother is a saint. It is also a metaphor because very good class. Because it is comparing mother to a saint. So that is metaphor. Now let's proceed with the third one. How about this? Number three. Can you just put it here? Okay, what do you think is that? Personification. Okay, very good. How about personification? Who have an idea about personification? Okay. Very good, Aldrin. Figure of speech that gives human characteristic to non-human object. What do you mean by that? It is 
equator in this position. We are giving human characteristic. For example, uh, we are telling that this table is walking. So that one is personification. Now, we can give this an example. Please write it on the board. Okay. So this one is the example of DB. Okay, let's read. The palm trees were dancing in the wind. Do you think that one is correct? Yes, very good. Why? Because it is telling us that palm trees are dancing. Well, uh, in true to life, in true to life, palm trees cannot dance, right? Okay. How about the second sentence only? The wind sang a soothing song. Do you think the wind can sing? I don't think so. So that one is also personification. Okay, so let's proceed now with the fourth one. How about this? Fourth one. What do you think is that? Yes, Andrea, that one is hyperbole. Very good. What do we mean by hyperbole? Andrea, it is? Yes, exaggerated of a sentence for emphasis or purpose. So you will uh, put some exaggeration in your sentences. Okay, you can give me an example. About Ronnie. Okay, Ronnie, these are your examples. I can smell my mom's cooking miles away. Okay, for example, you are living here. And then, your house, I need your this school is like one kilometer away. Do you think you can still smell the, the, the food that your mom is cooking? Not, right? So that one is hyperbole. It is very exaggerated. How about the second sentence? Hi, I have tons of homework. Well, teachers don't give tons of homework, right? So I think that one also is hyperbole. So the example of Ronnie is correct. Okay, and now let's proceed with the last one. This is the final. Number five, do you have any guess? Yes, Helen, onomatopoeia is correct. What is onomatopoeia, Helen? It is a word that sounds like the noise it describes. So, meaning, it pertains to the sounds. Sounds that we hear, like that, something like that. Okay, now, well, let's give, uh, please give me an example for onomatopoeia. Maricar. Okay. So, we have written it on the board. Example is, the sheep went ball. What else? The onomatopoeia in that sentence. The word, ba. Okay, and lastly, your sentence number two, the best part about music class is that you can bang on the drum. Okay, so the sound of the drum is bang, and it is used uh, in the sentence, bang on the drum. So those are the five figures of the speech that uh, we need to know. Those are just the basics. Okay, basic only. Now, do you have any question, guys? None? Okay, so before we uh, have an activity or before you do some writing, let's have a game. You like games, right? Okay, so let's start with the first one. I have here is paper, okay? So I will play a song and then you will identify if uh, the sentences or the words used in each song uh, are uh, simile, metaphor, personification, hyperbole, or onomatopoeia. So let's start. Yes, you know, hyperbole. 
hyperbole is correct. Why? Because it said there that he can catch a grenade for uh, you. I can I can throw my head on a blade for you, and also I jump in the front of the train for you. So that uh, those words or those sentences are exaggerated. There. So that one is hyperbole. Very good. How about the second song? Let's hear the second song. Metaphor. Why? Because yes, very good. Cindy, he, uh, I'm the singer. Is comparing maybe the girl or his crush to a kryptonite. Okay, so that one is metaphor because it is a direct comparison of two dissimilar things. How about what song number? Never sleep at night. It is first sanitation. Very good. Okay, let's proceed. Okay, that one is onomatopoeia. Okay, very good because of the word bang bang. So those are the five figures of the speech class that you need to know. So let's start. Again, what do we mean by simile? Monitor. Okay, simile is a comparison between two unlike things by using as or like. How about metaphor meaning? It is a direct comparison between two dissimilar things. Very good, Lily. How about you know what is personification? It's a figure of speech used to give human characteristic to non-human object. Okay, very good. Do not. Number four, Helen. Hyperbole is you exaggerate the sentence for emphasis or for pause. And lastly, number five, onomatopoeia. Maricard, it is a word that sounds like the noise it describes. So I think you know now what do we mean by those figures of the speech. So I think you are now ready for. The activity. I will give you this uh, handouts, and then you will answer it for five minutes. Okay. Time's up, class. So for your assignment, I think it is already time for your assignment. You're going to compose a poem of three verses. What do you mean by three verse? Again, we have discussed this before. Okay, you're going to this one would be your assignment one. Compose a poem of three verse using the five figurative languages. So you're going to use those five figurative languages. Okay, now class. Do you have any questions regarding our lesson for today? None. Okay, so I think that would be all. And let's call it a day. Goodbye, class. Thank you.